to another Trail Talk Barclay update. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined with Ricky Wynn, uh, Irish hooker runner and uh, also fellow panellist on the main Trail Talk show that runs twice a month. Thanks for joining us, Ricky. Uh, you all hyped up on Barclay Buzz. Yeah, man. I love, I love me a bit of Barclay. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Yeah, totally. So let's run through what we know about Loop 3, and actually some runners are now out on, on Loop 4. So we're going to run through the names and what we've we've sort of collated some of that information from social media, uh, X, spreadsheets, you know, Instagram, hashtags, all of this sort of stuff, a little bit on Reddit as well, just bringing it together and we'll condense it into like a 10-minute update. And we will also do a, another update probably in about 12 hours so early tomorrow morning we'll give you another update to see where where we are with things because we'll be coming in at the end of, of loop three for the front march. so that's exciting and it's getting getting close to the end um so in terms of weather it's clear a little bit of cloud coming in weather it looks like it's been a really hot hot year or not not hot year but a really clear year super for navigating beautiful sunny skies you don't see that often at frozen heads here we don't no, no way, man. It's usually it's usually the complete opposite. It's like Irish weather, a bit of everything, right? But is there is there much of a chance of rain? Is is the rain coming? Because like the forecast I saw was like it was going to start off dry and then and then we were going to see some rain. So I, I'm sure it's not too far away either. Yeah, so we have light rain coming in uh, overnight, uh, early hours of the Friday morning. And then that's getting heavier throughout the day. And uh, tomorrow evening, it's uh, heavy rain, heavy downpours. So spare a thought for the people that are struggling, uh, if there is any uh, still out there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it could get very difficult. But to be fair, times are quick. They've had an easy ride thus far. Uh, so uh, let's throw a bit of, bit of Barkley, Barkley weather at them. Uh, going from uh, Keith Dunn's latest update as of about 20 minutes ago, we have eight runners on loop four, and that means that we have two still on, on loop three. So that's the most they've ever had going into a loop four in any Barclay in history, which is which is pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, it's unheard of, unheard of. But again, the weather's been good. The pace has been hot. I can imagine if it starts to rain now, the, the the ground's going to get really wet. They're going to slow down, and you're going to see. I think we're going to see a few drops now. Yeah, <laughs> there has to be. It, it feels like, and yes, Richard in the chat, I see that. Yeah, relative easy. Yeah, easy at Barclay is uh, is a different type of, of easy. <laughs> Easier than previous years for sure is is what the feeling is. Let's touch a little bit on where the runners are, times, who, what we know about these people. So there's a Ukrainian-Canadian guy, and he touched the gate first at the end of the third loop. Uh, Ior or Eor varies. It's his first bloody attempt. How cool is that? Normally, Barkley experience counts for everything in, in, in this game. So first, his first Barkley attempt, and he's already got a 31-hour, 31-minute fun run under his belt. Jam Jam will be crying at that, <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> insane though, insane for first goal, like not to be and not to be tagging along. He's not. It's not like he's grabbing on to John Kelly and letting John Kelly lead the way. This man is on a charge, like it, it's it's insane. Yeah, totally. He he came in five minutes ahead of John, and five minutes on the course is probably out of sight. You would think, right? And I doubt he's made a surge to, you know, just get to his crew crew quicker. Uh, yeah, Stephen, go Eeyore. It's 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 uh, amazing to see like a new face there, someone I'd never heard of. And just looking up some of his previous results, uh, he's basically won whatever there is to win in in Canada. He won Hurt One Hundred in twenty hours fifty minutes just in January past. We know that that's a technical five loop course, uh, very rudy. Loads of art, you know, it's kind of UTMB class of 100 miler in around that uh, 30,000 foot, uh, 10,000 meters sort of sort of crack. Uh, Fat Dog won 20 in 2022, 20 hour 29 hour time. He won that. 
He was second in 24 hours at the uh, the now infamous Guy Robbins Wham event. Hashtag fuck you, TMB. Uh, <laughs> so, but his ultra sign up only goes back to 2020. So, unless he's just moved into North America or something, maybe if anyone knows otherwise, let us know in the chat. But, like, he's come out of nowhere and in, a, in three years, he's he's done a fun run at the Barclay. So, uh, you know, hats off to him uh, for one, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, I don't know. Like, I know he's got pedigree, right? And we see loads. We see loads of people that take on the Barclay, and they've got like big wins and big races and stuff like that. It doesn't mean shit in the Barclay. The Barclay is like nothing else. He's got to be really, really strong on the uphill. He's got to be really, really like mentally strong, and then he's got to be a super nav man. Like, so obviously he knows what he's at, and like he's put, he's hammering. He's hammering. You have to, and I've got mad respect for anyone that can run quick and navigate because those two parts of the brain don't overlap well. <laughs> and I've done long distance orienteering before, and you just have to slow down, otherwise you make a mistake. It's, I mean, I'm talking to the guy here that misses turns and misses markers. Like you're the perfect, perfect guy to, to bounce this off. And yeah, I just see Stephen in the chat saying that he came second uh, to Harvey Lewis in the backyard world champs last year in 107 hours. So, like, the 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 dude has has the endurance. So interested to see how he goes. Uh, moving on then to John Kelly, seventh attempt at the Barclay. Uh, what a what an athlete! Uh, looking at his times, he came in five minutes after uh, Eor Varys to touch the gate, and then his time last year to the three three loops was thirty two oh four. This year thirty one thirty six. So we're seeing faster times across the board, uh, comparing to previous years as well. He's at a thirty five thirty six, and he's at, he's at a thirty two fifty eight in 2017 whenever he was a finisher so what what do you think about john's chances that it's looking good right it's it's looking really good but it's also showing how good the this other lad that's leading the charge is because like john is after taking half an hour a loop off his previous time like and and this guy is still pulling away so like i i, I don't know what more we can say about this guy there could be a, a an unbelievable time ran if he can keep that going. As for John, yeah, look, I, I definitely see the way he's running now, and I, you, you got to say that he's gonna he's gonna be the, he's gonna get number three. He's got to get number three, right? We all want him to get number three. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just uh, the experience that John brings to the table, and this is, is amazing and for Eor to be leading the charge and having the confidence to go out front. And, and and do his own nav is amazing. Let's see w- what it's like whenever they have to go their own separate separate ways. And they definitely are going different directions, a different dynamic there for sure. Moving on then, uh, coming in and running with John Kelly by the looks of it, Damien Hall. Basically together, I said this in the previous stream, I wouldn't be mad confident on Demo's navigating ability. Super nice, good guy, got the endurance, uh, got the athletic ability, but you don't just learn navigating. You don't. Like, John didn't learn navigating. He's combined that with local knowledge. He, he grew up close to the course. So that's a difficult skill to learn. You can you can learn to run uphill. Can you learn to read a map while running for 60 hours? I don't know. When they separate, do you think Demo's got a chance of of doing well? See, see, I think that's exactly what Demo's done. Demo's just sat in with John. John's doing all the navigating. John's doing a lot of the work. And Demo's just sitting in there, which is a great thing for Damien right now. But, I mean, you know, if he's left on his own, what's that going to mean? Like, if he's not leading the way and he's not doing some of the nav now, he's going to get found out in the last loop. Like, look, I hope for his sake he doesn't, but I just don't think he's he's got those nav skills to to go it alone. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the time you get up in the morning, you may you may have found out. <laughs> let's let's see. Uh, and then, interesting. Actually, he started loop four a couple of minutes behind John, so there might be some separation going on there, or maybe it was just a case of you know 
John has touched the gate to, to start and Damien will, will, will have a bit of a jog on to, to catch up with him. So we've touched on Eor Varys, who is kind of, I would say, the story of loop three. He's kind of come to the fore. And if he comes through and finish and becomes a finisher, it's going to be a mad story. And it could probably only be superseded by Jasmine Paris. Like yeah. if Jasmine Paris can get the finish here at the Barclay, this is going to be massive. This is going to hit mainstream news. It's going to, it's, the Barclay's just going to blow up all over again. And put it into perspective, last year her fun run was 35-40, and this year it's 32-15. That's big. That's the biggest improvement by anybody in the field. It's huge. Yeah, oh, she's a beast, man. She's a beast. I met her a couple of times before, and she's, she's just so strong. She's so solid. And she's taken some serious confidence into this into this year, you know, so look every single one of us are behind Jasmine this year. You know, there's not a there's not a man, woman or child following Barkley who doesn't want to see Jasmine get the job done. But it's the Barkley. You know, it's the Barkley. Like there's a huge thing to get from three to four and then four to five. Like there's still so much that can happen. Like you said, you know, in twelve hours time it's gonna tell a completely different story from number one to, to whoever else is out there, you know? Yeah, we're we're gonna lose a few more for sure. Um Jasmine is, is so impressive. Uh, Owen in the chat asking about uh, time-wise, uh, light or dark. Um, yeah, so it is the afternoon in Tennessee right now. So they've started in the light and they're going to be finishing it in the dark. So there's some some challenges there. But, you know, the forecast is clear skies, um, a bit of moonshine, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, so it's not going to be any more difficult than the nights have already gone through. Uh, but that'll be, that'll be interesting. And for sure, the uh, hallucinations will be creeping in. You know, we're going into 35-ish hours of running very soon. Uh, well, I think they started a couple of hours ago. So, yeah, personally for me, 35, 37, 38 hours, that's whenever I see, start to see monsters in the woods. And... Uh, Maybe these guys can can push the hallucinations out a bit further than me, but they're going to come at them soon enough, I think. Yeah, what do you think? They're definitely going to come at them. I did a five-hour run at the weekend, and I was looking ahead of me, and I thought I saw a rabbit, and then I thought, no, no, it's a stone. And then it was, no, it is actually a rabbit. Like, And I was only out for five hours. Like, My brain was messing with my head like because I was low on carbohydrates, low on sugar, low on something, low on energy. You can only imagine what they're going to be like, you know. And it's one more night into it, like, and if the weather turns as well, they're going to be seeing some crazy shit out there. Yeah, uh, totally. I, I just have so much respect for, for these uh, athletes going up after the Barclay. Whenever, like, one of the, the greatest Irish ultra runners, uh, uh, Ian Keith, and we know how good he is. He's an experienced orienteer. And he was just he was just shit at the Barclay. He just wasn't good enough. And Billy yeah. Reid, another Irish runner, a top orienteer, uh, experienced ultra distance fell runner. Again, he was nowhere uh, at the Barclay. And uh, it just kind of shows Jasmine's pedigree. Just keep coming back to that. She has grit. She has navigating experience. She's long distance experience. And like she's gonna check a load of guys here. I, I would love her to win it outright, but, you know, she is slipping back a little bit, starting basically um, loop four around an hour behind the, the leading man. So let's see. But i tell you who she is still in front of. Uh, absolute quiet dude, stud, uh, Jared Campbell. Absolutely love that guy. Like head down, epic mountain challenges, uh, Barkley guy through and through and he came in at the end of his fun run in 32.20 and again he's on his own five, uh, 15, five minutes sorry um, after after Jasmine so what, what do you think that says about, Jas or about uh, Jared? It's hard to know I, I wonder like yeah look Unbelievable legend, legend of the Barclay. I, I don't know how many times he's done it now. Is it is this is am I right in saying it's the seventh, seventh time? There you go, like in, insane, right? And then I just wonder like how he is, like how his body is holding up. 
because last year we saw that he had the the knee issue, like, and that that ended his race. So I'd love to just know how he's feeling right now. I know he's after getting. He's he's not far behind Jasmine, but you know, time doesn't be long eating away at you in the Barkley. And if he is carrying some kind of a niggle, then I just don't know. Has he got it in him to to keep going and get another finish? I I just don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, time will tell, but uh, you know he. He's the sort of guy that'll motor on until until he can't do it anymore. And uh, if anyone hasn't seen the, the Carl Sabe uh, documentary that dropped last week, check it out. It is maybe my favourite uh, Barkley movie yet, and it's fifty something minutes. So you know, pull up uh, pull up a soft seat and and sit back. Uh, I I enjoyed it uh, last week. So that's all we have for the Loop 3 Stroke Starter Loop 4 update, guys. Thanks for joining. We're going to come back again tomorrow morning. Um, European time, it's going to be before lunch. Uh, we'll, we'll just see how, how things are going. Hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified whenever we go live again. I'll schedule a live stream so you guys can hit the notification bu- button as well. But uh, Ricky, thanks for joining me. And uh, go, everyone... Jasmine. Go, yeah, Jasmine. Go, go, Jasmine. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye.